Hello, Sam here with another video. This time we're showing how to set up a bottom rope for climbing. We'll be showing principles for doing this safely so you can use this example and adapt it to your own days out climbing. Bottom roping is a great way to get lots of climbing done. It's ideal if you're out with a group and you just want to get moving and enjoying climbing in a low stress way. So just like indoor climbing, with bottom roping, the climber and bee layer start together on the ground, climber goes up and then lowers back to the floor. So that's what we're going to show. First of all, when you've arrived, figure out which route you're going to do and pick out a reference point in line with your route, but away from the base of the cliff, like a boulder or a tree. You can then walk around to the top and identify where you need the ropes to be hanging. Look for the reference point and this should prevent you having to go close to the edge before you're on a rope. While you're sorting yourself out, you can be checking out what else is going on. Other people who might be around and need considering, where's a comfy spot for a coffee and possibly more importantly, where are your anchors going to be? Look for anchors within an arc of about 60 degrees of the top of the route. If you need a reminder on the basics of placing gear, just check out that video first. We're going to rate each piece 1 to 5 and aim for a total of at least 11. If you're using nuts and cams, that's at least 3 anchors and I'd suggest that as a minimum. Big trees or good bolts, threads, these might be exceptions where you could just use 2 anchors. But when you're placing these nuts, consider the direction of load. Where's that pull going to come from? And is that force going to pull the gear in more securely against good rock or is it going to twist it in awkward ways? Once we have bomber anchors placed, we're going to join them together. To start doing that in this example, Will decides to join two of the pieces with a sling. Notice he gets rid of the stitching by positioning that up at the top and then the sling clips into one and then the second nut as well. You can imagine the sling as creating the head of an arrow and the arrow should be tight toward where the weight of the climber will be to equalize the two nuts. Both of them are taking weight. We also want to make sure that if one of these pieces does for some reason fail, there's no sudden introduction of slack into the system. That's why Will is tying this knot in the sling. It makes the two pieces independent. The sling is going to stay tight even if one of the nuts fails. So a figure of eight on the bite and that clips into the sling. You could use a clove hitch here to make any adjustments at the end a little bit easier. To get close to the edge, Will ties onto the rope here with a clove hitch. You could use a prusik for this. You might not need to do this at all if you can see the bottom of the root and the edge from a nice safe position, but it's much better to be safe than sorry. From here you can measure out a little bit of rope so that the climbing rope is going to be hanging over the edge and then tie another figure of eight on the bite. Two carabiners are clipped on here with the opening gates in opposite directions. In this example, these carabiners are going to be touching the rock, not hanging nicely in space. So using two is a nice reassuring option. Clip the middle of the climbing rope to both carabiners, doing the gates up. You can then coil up a bit of rope and throw the ends down to the floor. Make sure you shout below before you throw them and actually wait for a response before you chuck it on someone's head. You can then check the carabiners are locked and hanging nicely. Moving back from the edge now, we need to add in the final anchor to the belay. Having the rope already hanging down puts a bit of weight on there and helps with getting this equalization right. So taking the second rope from the figure of eight, tie a clove hitch to the final anchor. This is super easy to tighten and adjust. Check the setup one final time. Carabiners are locked, any sharp edges are padded and everything is nice and neat before you head down to climb. So to recap quickly, we're talking about solid anchors in good rock that add up to an unquestionably strong belay. Think about the direction of pull. 
make sure they're equalized so all pieces are taking weight and that they are independent. So if one anchor fails, the others immediately take the weight. Make sure you're keeping yourself safe at the top while you're setting up. Then attaching to the rope and belaying are obviously key. If you need help with those, you probably shouldn't be setting up top ropes to be honest. But we've got videos on that and of course we run courses covering all of that good stuff. Thanks for watching, comment, like, share away and head over and give us a follow on Instagram to plant a tree. We're super excited about our tree planting program at the moment and that would be a great way to show us a little bit of support. Thanks a lot.